G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. I'm really excited about this particular video. I've just gotten past the halfway mark in my new 12 week weight training program that I threw up on YouTube uh, seven or eight weeks ago. Um, so I thought I'd just take this moment to talk about some of the tweaks I've made to the program along the way, uh, the challenges I've faced as I've gone through it, uh, and also some of the results. But first, let's get through the intro. Right, I'm super excited to get through this video, um, but before we do that, if this is your first time joining me on the channel, thank you very much for watching. Um, really, this, this channel is just about tracking my own fitness and weight loss journey, um, but also in the hopes that if you're, if you're in a position like I was, where you'd been talking about getting fit for years and didn't know really where to start, struggle with um, you know, getting that initial motivation to get up and, and get started or maintain that motivation once you have started, um, or also sifting through all of the conflicting information on the internet as to what you should and shouldn't be doing. Really, this channel is about um, documenting my own progress and all the tips and tricks I pick up along the way, um, all the BS in the fitness industry that I uncover, um, and also just present to you the actual experimental effects of, of applying what I've, what I've researched and what I've read and what I practice, uh, and to talk about exactly how, how those results play out over time. So. Um, you know, if you get any use out of this video, please hit me up on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, mash that subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment on YouTube. I do reply to them all and like the video. So let's talk about the midway point. I'm actually a little bit past the midway point in the program. Um, I had intended to do this video at the end of the sixth week. It is a 12 week program uh, and I deloaded on the sixth week, meaning that I halved uh, or thereabouts all of the weight in the program just to let my muscles completely recover from all the training I've been doing. Um, unfortunately, whilst I had planned to do this video at the end of the sixth week, it didn't play out that way. There's been a lot of stuff going on in real life that's kind of taken uh, priority and, you know, to a greater or lesser extent kind of has been affecting a little bit of my motivation as well. Work's been crazy. There's other shit going on. So it is what it is. But uh, here we are at the end of the seventh week. And I've got to say, overall, my body is loving it. Um, to the point where if I skip a training day or on weekends when I'm supposed to be resting, my body actually misses it. it it's like, okay, so are we gonna lift some weights today or not? Um, which, is, which is a great outcome. The one thing I will say is whilst I'm at the end of my seventh week of training, um, I'm actually at the end of the eighth week by calendar. And I say that because I, I, in the fourth week of my new program, I went to Dubai, um, as you would know from the video that I uploaded. Uh, and I didn't really include that. I did some training via the resistance bands, but I didn't actually include it in my program. So um, yeah, to me, it's the weekend, it's the end of the seventh week and I'm going into the eighth. Um, yeah, so let's let's talk about the tweaks I've made along the way, because there have been changes to the program. Um, it, you know, if you refer back to, I can never remember which side of the screen is gonna come up on, so if you look at one of the two corners, I'll link back to the original video. Um, just outlining my program, I had had originally designed a three-day split. So push exercises on day one, pull exercises on day two, and leg day on day three. And I would split that up Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, now, the first thing I had to change, in week three or thereabouts, I really struggled to continue to load up the dumbbells that I had tailored the program around using um, with more and more and more weight. You know, I had some fixed weight dumbbells um, at six, eight, and 10 kilos each. And I was getting to a point for a lot of my exercises where that just wasn't enough weight. Um, now I could have gone out and bought some, some dumbbells with adjustable weight, but I thought, bugger it, while I'm there, I may as well just pick up a barbell. So I actually switched quite a few of my exercises like bench press and like a lot of the, um, the deadlifts and Romanian deadlifts and that sort of stuff. Um, the things that are traditionally barbell based, I did switch to barbells in the third week. Then in the fifth week, I made uh, a few other changes and I am looking at a board behind the camera um, because there's no way I'd memorize all of this. So I actually started doing my legs day. <laughs> Everybody skips legs day. It's a running joke. Um, and I was definitely doing that for the first couple of weeks. Um, but I stopped doing that in week five. I've been religiously sticking to the program ever since week five. 
Uh, I was certainly doing push and pull in the first four weeks, but <clears throat> yeah, I was getting a little bit lazy around the middle of the week and not doing legs. Um, but I do want a rounded physique at the end of this. So, uh, you know, you can't really skip really large and important muscles like your legs. So I started doing that and I also decided um, after doing some more research and not really getting the results that I was looking for as quickly as I wanted, I actually um, changed my program up to a five day a week schedule. Now, given it only takes half an hour in my living room, that's not a real big deal to me. I've got a lot of time on my hands at the moment. Um, if I knocked it back to a three day a week program, then you know, the, having done the five days um, for several weeks would certainly have helped get my muscle strength uh, and, and the physical size of my muscles up. So I've got no regrets around that. Uh, and the way I structured it, I'm, I'm now doing a push on, I think I start with push. Yeah, I do push uh, on Mondays. So I'm focusing on um, uh, bench press, so for the pecs, uh, my triceps, uh, triceps and shoulders. Uh, they're, they're push, push exercises essentially. Uh, on Tuesday, I do pull, so that's where I switch to uh, the biceps. Uh, I do my legs and glutes just through a deadlift to get that warmed up for leg day um, and a couple of other exercises around the concept of push. Uh, and then I've just totally screwed up my program, so <laughs> we might go back. All right, so um, I do push on Mondays. That starts with bench press for the pecs. Um, a, a lot of tricep exercises and shoulder exercises. That's push. Um, and then uh, on Tuesdays, I'm doing pull exercises. So that's bicep curls. Um, I'm doing deadlifts. And I can't remember the, the third muscle group on oh, my back. So I'm doing my traps and my lats just through some um, upright rows. Um, and then on Wednesdays, I'm doing legs. And then on Thursdays, this is the extra day that I added in, I'm doing um, a second set of push. Now, again, I'm targeting the same exercise or the same muscle groups as the first push day, um, but I'm doing different exercises just to change it up a bit. Uh, and then on Friday, I'm doing a second pull. Now, I could potentially do a six day a week program and do two leg days, but uh, I find Monday to Friday actually suits my schedule quite well. Um, so I started doing that in week five. Um, I also started adding 30 minutes of light cardio on weekends. So on a Saturday and a Sunday, first thing in the morning, I'll go for a light jog or a quick walk. I'm really only aiming to hit about 70 to 80% of my maximum heart rate. It needs to be light exercise because I don't want to drain my body of too much energy, which it's currently needing to build larger muscle mass. Um, in week six, I added a pre-workout. So I, I kind of changed up my diet a little bit. Um, so before I start my session every afternoon, I now take some protein. So I just have a whey protein isolate shake, uh, which we've talked about several times before. I take some BCAAs, which you know you can either take before or during the workout instead of water. Um, and I take an actual pre-workout, which contains a crap load of caffeine and a few other things to, to kind of give your muscles a bit of a pump, give you a little bit of extra boost in performance while you're doing the, the, the exercise and help you basically lift heavier weights because the whole goal of this program is to progressively overload your muscles to lift heavier weights than your muscles are capable of lifting um, to a point of near fatigue or even fatigue sometimes, uh, which creates a process called hypertrophy where your body responds to the broken down muscle fibers by building more uh, larger muscle fibers that are, that are fundamentally stronger, it recruits more and more cells, it builds new nuclei inside your muscles, and that's essentially how you gain strength. So um, that pre-workout just gives me a little bit of a boost. I'm not sure if I'm gonna to stick to it long-term. It's got a lot of caffeine in it. It does make you feel a bit buzzed. Um, yeah, so I'm not, not a huge fan of it, but I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, I also take a, a post-workout. So I, I take more protein via shake after the workout. I really wanna give my body protein uh, pretty closely after a workout. Um, now the current research, and I mean really recent, says that the, the window for taking in protein after a workout isn't quite as instantaneously afterwards that most bros would have you think. Um, you've probably got between one and two hours to get some protein into your body after a workout. Whereas if you ask most people to go to the gym, they'll be drinking a shake on the way out the door. Um, but I do take it pretty pretty close. And I also take my uh, creatine. So I take five, gram, uh, five milligrams of creatine every day 
just to help with muscle protein synthesis. Uh, so that was week six, and the final tweak, uh, week seven, this week, I really just started tweaking my diet a little bit. So um, I'm taking some carbohydrates. Because I eat lunch at midday, I get home at 5.30, 6, between 5.30 and 6.30, depending on the day from work. Um, you know, and I'll start my workout at 6.30, 7 o'clock. It's a big gap between having lunch where I've got some carbohydrates and some protein in my blood to fuel the workout. Um, and even with the, pro, uh, the, the pre-workout, you still want some carbs. So I've been uh, having a banana uh, beforehand. Um, and then afterwards, I refuel my body a little bit. So I'll take kiwi fruit um, and maybe some rice cakes if I can fit it into my, my macros. Um, really, the idea of rice cakes plus kiwi fruit is uh, you're using two different transport uh, models inside your body to get carbohydrates um, you know, absorbed into the body. So um, you know, fructose-based carbohydrates and, and, um, and the rest, are, you know, different types of sugars uh, go through the glucogen pr process into your bloodstream through different transport methods. So uh, it's just a way of getting those carbs back into your body quicker. So that's it for the tweaks. And you know, there's quite a big jump to go from three days a week to five. Uh, and that really has made a, a measurable, feelable difference. Oh, it's not even a word. It is now. Hey, Mark, I invented a word. Um, so let's talk about the challenges. And I have faced quite a few challenges along the way. First and foremost was motivation. You know, there are days that I just don't want to work out. Um, and that's really where I just have to push through. I need to, um, you know, do the thing that I hate people doing in gyms and go flex in front of the mirror. Um, you know, just to, to remind myself of why I'm doing it, because I am starting to see some physical results and, and that is kind of feeling motivation, but there are days where I'm feeling pretty low. Um, you know, there's been a lot going on, as I said at the start of the video, between work and some stuff in personal life. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it can be challenging to push through. So far, so good though. I have, like I said, I've been hitting, hitting my daily program every day. Um, with a couple of failures, which I then make up on the weekends. So notably this week, week seven, uh, I skipped Tuesday because it was Melbourne Cup Day. And instead of going home and working out, I went out drinking, which most people are doing on Melbourne Cup Day in Australia. Um, it's a big day. Uh, I actually didn't drink that much, but it was a long night. So I didn't get home until like 9.30, 10 o'clock after partying all afternoon um, and didn't do a workout. So I made up for it yesterday, which was Saturday. Same program, same splits. I just, you know, took that day out of the program and, and shuffled everything forward today. Um, other, other challenges I've been facing, because I am running a diet designed to lose body fat, I'm in a recomposition process. I wanna lose body fat whilst gaining muscle mass. And there's lots of research that indicates um, that you can successfully do that. I am successfully doing that, so the proof's kinda in the pudding. Uh, but it's very easy to find a lot of research that says that you shouldn't try. Well, I call bullshit to that because, um, you know, certainly my body fat's going down, my weight's going down, but I, I have physically, like visibly larger muscles. So uh, anyone who says you can't do both at the same time is, is full of crap. Um, but it does require a little bit more planning, thought and execution. And I am finding a bit of a challenge with that. I'm running at a 25% deficit, um, caloric deficit in my diet, meaning I'm eating 25% less calories than my body needs in order to maintain its current size. Um, now, I'm doing that to, to burn through fat, to lose weight, um, and I'm making sure that my protein macros are kept very high to minimize muscle wastage whilst I'm in caloric um, deficit. However, because you really wanna spread your protein, your, your protein over four or five solid meals, you wanna take in at least 30 to 40 grams of protein pre-workout, you know, I am actually struggling some days to balance my macros out. It's like I don't have enough calories to have all of the meals that I want to have. I have to say, I'm never hungry. I never feel physically hungry. It's more just balancing macros, you know, in the app uh, that I do struggle with. Um, other challenges, my biceps. So, I, I, you know, I've gotten a lot of physical change and, um, you know, and I can feel the, the tightness change um, in my triceps, for example, uh, but my biceps really haven't been physically growing as quickly as I'd like. So I did some research and there was something that indicated that um, doing a minimum of 10 sets on, on a lot of muscles um, is kind of where the, the value curve curves out. So you still get value out of doing, say, five or six sets in a week on a particular muscle group, um, but 10 is really where it starts to curve out. And you get diminishing returns as you approach, say, 20 sets. Uh, and there's currently conjecture about whether or not it starts to drop off after that. 
all irrelevant to me. Uh, I was doing two pull days uh, where I was doing three sets of uh, bicep curls, um, of 10 bicep curls, so I've already at six sets. So I picked my second push day and I added in hammer curls, which hit the biceps in a slightly different way, it focuses on the long head of the bicep and also some of the forearm muscles. So, and I haven't had any more pain from it. That's only in week seven. So we'll see how we go over time. Uh, other challenges, I've noticed my weight is dropping a hell of a lot slower than I would have liked, which we'll talk about in the results section in a second. Uh, my triceps are still a, a strength limitation. I am finally starting to get some value out of bench press in my pecs. They've tightened up, they've gotten, the muscle has, has certainly grown and it's a lot, it's like rock now. Um, but the progress has been a lot slower than I'd like because my triceps always fatigue before my pectorials do. So that's still a challenge, but there's nothing really I think I can do about it. I just need to push through. Uh, and the last thing is a bit silly and you might be able to see, I don't know if you can in this light, but um, front squats. Basically, you're, you're leading a bar on your shoulder and you can actually see a previous injury issue that I also have. It's another challenge. Uh, which I'll talk about in a sec, but you hold the bar on in, in front, um, you're, you're typically slightly leaning and you're squatting um, with your legs, so you keep your back completely straight. Now the problem I've got is, when I'm resting 35, 40 kilos on a barbell here, I'm my shoulders aren't bulky enough really to lift, to hold that weight and with a lot of um, strength. So, the, you know, my shoulders aren't like rocks yet, so I actually get bruising on, on my shoulders holding the bar up. I don't know if it's just technique, I'm not holding it right. I've tried various things, I still get bruising. At the end of the day, who gives a shit? It doesn't really matter to me anyway. Uh, as long as I'm, my form's still good and the, and the uh, barbell's moving in a, in a perfectly vertical direction uh, and it's not moving forward or backwards any, then I'm protecting my back, I don't really care about the bruising. So, final section, because I'm aware that we're at like 20 minutes or something, um, results. I've got to say, I'm definitely seeing results. I'm seven weeks into a 12 week program and I'm seeing some great results. Uh, beyond the physical changes that I'm seeing, which are certainly feeding motivation, my muscles are larger, they're tighter, they're, um, you know, they're harder. Um, and with the loss of weight, they're also becoming more and more pronounced. So it's not, you know, death defying bodily changes just yet, but it's certainly visibly different. Um, certainly my gut has disappeared considerably, but let's just talk about strength quickly. So uh, if I look at three major muscle groups, um, triceps, I started in week one lifting 12 kilos. Um, or when I say lifting, the exercises I'm doing to isolate triceps, I was pushing 12 kilos of weight. I'm now pushing 20 kilos. Um, biceps, so bench press, I started at a very, very weak and measly and embarrassing 16 kilos. I'm now at 40. Um, which you know still isn't spectacular. No one's going to to break a sweat over benching 40 kilos uh, or get excited about it. But um, you know, up from 16, I'm pretty happy. And then on bicep curls, I started at 12 and 16 kilos, um, and we are talking. So when I talk about bicep curls, I'm talking uh, the equivalent of a barbell. So if I say 12 quick kilos, it's either 12 kilos loaded on a barbell or it's two six kilo dumbbells. Same difference. Um, so I started at. 16 kilo drop set. So I'd be able to do the first set of 10 at 16. Um, I'd get halfway through the second set at 16 and I just, my muscle was completely fatigued. I couldn't lift it again. So I dropped it down to 12 kilos and then I would finish the, the second set at 12 and then I'd do the full 10 reps in the third set at 12 kilos. So between 12 and 16 kilos, I'm now comfortably doing 22 and a half to 25 kilos in biceps. So there's definite strength change there. Um, in terms of the total weightlifting, I mean, it's a bit of a wanky uh, measure to be honest, but um, you know, in week one, I lifted a total of three tons of weight through my exercises, not including things like push-ups and sit-ups, because I am doing, I am doing um, ab uh, core work five days a week. So every time I do my workouts, no matter what day of the week it is, I'm doing you know, 75 to 150 sit-up equivalents, various different crunch types, um, just to, to kind of break it up a bit. Um, but I lifted three tons in the first week. Uh, by the fifth week, I lifted nine tons total. Um, mind you, you know, there was a, the, the, to jump to nine tons, that was where I went to the five day a week program. And coming out of, I mean, obviously six week, I was uh, on, in week six, I was deloading, so a lot less. 
And then this week that I've just finished, I've just lifted 11 tons. So really I added two tons of overall weights lifted in um, a week, you know, week to week period if you, if you skip the deload. Finally, um, you know, obviously the, the important thing, it, well, one of the important things is weight. Um, so I have dropped weight, just not nearly as quickly as I would have liked or expected to, to be honest. So um, I'm at 88.6 kilos right now. Uh, I've dropped 4.3 kilos in seven weeks which is about 615 grams a week. It's not what I thought I'd be getting. My, my macro program or my, my um, calorie deficit program was designed to deliver one kilo of weight loss per week. Now, obviously that's one kilo of fat lost per week. I am building muscle tissue, which is heavier than fat, but the likelihood that I'm putting on 400 grams of muscle tissue per week is actually pretty low. It takes a long time to build dense muscle tissue. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about a body transformation um, from where I started through to, you know, you know, at 80, you know, at say 95 kilos through to looking like a Greek Adonis. That's, you're talking 18 months, two years of nonstop training. Um, obviously, you get lots of gains at the start of your program. The first 12 months, you'll probably bulk up the most in terms of muscle mass and then find diminishing returns over time. But, you know, 400 grams of muscle mass average over seven weeks just seems a little high for me. Uh, I'd love to think that it's true, but I kind of doubt it. Um, still, uh, like I said, I, my, my caloric deficit is tailored around one kilo of weight loss per week. Uh, what I'm actually seeing in practice is it's yo-yoing. Now it's yo-yoing down. It's kind of seesawing. The weight will go up for a day and then down and then up and then down. Um, it'll plateau in a seesaw. So over the space of you know three or four days, it'll go um, to a high and then a low and then to the same high and to the same low and then drop again. I don't know what's going on. To be honest, I don't really care. Um, I'm still making progress in the training program. So that's really the main thing. Um, I have lost 2% body fat though. So, you know, that's something. Uh, and like I said at the start and all the way through, I have noticed significant physical changes. Um, I can actually start to see my abs, my six pack. Um, I don't have a six pack. I'm not telling anyone that I'm gonna be standing on the beach and, uh, you know, with washboard abs in the next few weeks, um, but it's actually there. It's not a gut anymore. Um, I would throw some progress photos up, but I'm kind of saving them for the end of the program so you can see the week by week progress. I am taking progress photos every Monday uh, when I wake up. Um, but I might just give you just a, just a slight teaser. If you look really quickly, I'll flash it up on the screen um, now. But only for a second, I don't know if you missed it. Hopefully uh, it's so quick that you can't even pause the YouTube video and see it. You'll just have to wait until I finish the program and throw the proper transformation video up. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. In terms of what's next, again, I'm just gonna finish this 12 week program. I've kind of settled into the routine. I don't think I need to make any more tweaks. I'm just gonna finish out the 12 weeks. I'll tack on a deload on in the 13th week while I tailor the next 12 week program. Um, that should take me to around Christmas. Uh, at the moment, my estimated, looking at the app, the, it's estimating that I should hit my goal weight of 82 kilos by the 29th of December. I really wanna bring that forward um, for a few reasons, mostly aesthetic. Uh, I started this whole channel and this fitness regime on um, Boxing Day, 26th of uh, December two years ago. It'd be really neat if uh, I could hit my target weight that I set all the way back then when I was 111, 112 kilos, if I could hit my 82 kilo target weight exactly two years to the day later, that would be cool, but you know, who really cares? Um, I might continue to add some cardio, some morning cardio, uh, just to accelerate weight loss a little bit. You know, really, I could be doing it five days a week as long as I keep it light and I do it in the morning, whereas I'm working out at night. So you really don't wanna mash cardio and, and weights training together too closely. You want a lot of a lot of, lot of distance between the two in terms of time. Um, and that's about it, just keep on going. I'll throw some progress picks up at the end of the 12 weeks and we'll see what we end up with physically. Um, anyway, that's it for me. It's a bit of a long video, sorry if I got a bit boring in the middle there. Um, but you know, it's pretty exciting from my perspective to actually see the results uh, and to keep pushing myself to continue the program. I really wanna see where I get to on the, the end of 12 weeks. So hopefully you'll join me in uh, five or six weeks time when I throw the final video up and see just how far I, I, I have come from where I started. Um, and if you did get some use out of this particular video, just in terms of, you know, you, you really have to keep it pra a bit loose and pragmatic when you're talking about a weight training program, you need to be prepared to, to make some tweaks, but also not meddle too much. 
you know, you really do need to stay the course sometimes when it comes to this stuff. So it's, it's all a bit of a balancing act. Um, but if you did get some use out of the video, please hit that like button on YouTube. Um, subscribe to the channel to see regular updates uh, and some more stuff around the science of, of weight loss and, and um, weight training. And I will be talking a little bit more about the science very soon because I've been doing a lot of research around it lately and I kind of want to present that to you. Um, yeah, hit me up on social media or on Instagram or Facebook. They're both the same. Pick one or the other. Don't do both because it's going to be boring and overlapping. Um, and leave me a comment on YouTube if you've got any questions or, or um, feedback or anything else that you want to see. Hit me up. I do reply to them all. That's it from me. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you very soon. Looking forward to it.